Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back. Glad to see you. I got another video. And um, why am I wearing this one? Well, there's a submarine that, uh, yeah, from a country that, uh, well, California flag has a bear on it. And a country also has represented by a bear has a certain uh, underwater boat, right? So, just saying, I've had two dreams, you know, one of them was like four years ago, about, uh, yeah, that underwater boat firing uh, underwater missiles. I'm sorry, I have to kind of talk in code. But, and I know it's been a while, sorry, but I'm not going to make videos just to make videos, you know. Um, some people do them every single day. I'm kind of waiting until um, I get the tap on the shoulder, say, look what I showed you, and, you know, put all the pieces together. But I don't get all the pieces. I only get part of the pieces, which is where you guys come in. Anyways, uh, there's two things that I saw face to face meaning we're gonna see our creator face to face now um, Moses um, saw the burning bush this is Exodus chapter 3 verse 6 I am the God of of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is the God of living, see? He says, and Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. And, but yet, and still, in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would returned to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. So, Moses did see him face to face. Who else saw him face to face? Adam and Eve. In the creation, um, before the fall, Adam was perfect. Eve was perfect too. They walked and talked. Because um, he was walking in the cool of the afternoon in the Garden of Eden, looking for Adam. And, Adam, where are you? And it's like, we're hiding. Why? Because we're afraid. Because we're naked. Well, who told you you were naked? Right? Knowledge of good and evil. Now, two trees. Tree of life. Tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Um, and yet, before... They, they walked and talked with God. To be in His presence, they had to be holy and perfect. They were. Till the fall. And then sin corrupted them. And then sin came into the world and brought death. Okay? So everybody dies. Not quite everybody. Uh, Enoch and Elijah were both taken. And it says, in Enoch walked and talked with God, and then he was no more. So, two things came up to me, face to face, and death. Uh, when the Israelites were at Mount Sinai, God said, nobody touch this mountain, animals, beasts, or man, or they will die if they touch it. Right? And there was thunders and lightnings, and they were afraid. They said, Moses, you go talk to him, okay? Because we're, we're afraid of this, you know? Because he is an awesome God. Even Moses. Moses hid his face. And even when God walked by him, turn your back. You can see my behind, but you can't see my face. Um, so, um, face to face. Who's going to see him face to face? His chosen ones that he has given to his son. 
They're called the sons of God. What? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to jump around a little bit, but it's necessary. Romans chapter 8. Um, 16. Okay. Romans 8, chapter 16. Or you can go 15. Let's go 15. I always like to go back a little bit, get context. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit is inside of us crying out. In fact, he groans inside of us, calling to the Father, praying because we don't know exactly how. But this is a learning process, you know. So in verse... Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Where two or three witnesses, right, confirm a thing. So, and it says, if, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. What? Yeah, face to face, together. Okay? So we're suffering in this world, we're going to suffer in this world, you know, and that's part of the plan. So give thanks, even though you're suffering. It sounds silly to the natural man going, what? I'm suffering, I'm punished, I, I can't, you know, whatever thing you're being um, tested with, because life is a test. Um, so it says in Romans 8, verse 18, For I consider the sufferings of this present age not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There's a glory that will be revealed in us. Okay? How do we know this? Well, Romans 8, verse 19, For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Creation. That means heaven, earth, all are waiting for us to be revealed. So, how do we know creation is doing this? Well, Romans 8, verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. I think when Adam fell, it affected everything. That sin crept into the earth. And then Abel, innocent blood, shed on the earth, cries out to the Lord, and the Lord can hear it. Cain, where's your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? And what does Jesus say? We should love God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our body, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Uh-huh. Who doesn't love our neighbor. Uh, that would be Satan who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. All right, let's go on. Romans 8, verse 21. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into a glorious liberty of the children of God. We will be freed. The earth will be freed. How do we know this? Well, Romans 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. So, let's go on. This is getting good. Romans 8, 23. Oh, 2023. Hmm. Um, not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Who's the first fruit? Jesus, when he, Yeshua, when he resurrected, he was a first fruits. And the graves were open, and yeah, first fruits. So let's read on. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. What? Yeah, we're waiting to be adopted into the kingdom of God, into the family. 
We're the body of Christ. He is the head. Redemption of our body. From being corrupted flesh, sinful flesh, into a body that's incorruptible, that does not perish, does not die, does not get tired. Um, so, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, 12, 12. Add that together. What is that? 24. Hmm. What's the reverse of 24? 42. 42 months. Okay, let's read this. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. No, 13, 12. Sorry. I was, I was off. But Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Also, so also is Christ. We are many different bodies, many different colors, many different nationalities, many different um, tongues or languages, right? And many different gifts. Not everybody has the same gifts. But yet God works it so that we all work together. We all get a little piece, put it all together, makes sense. But we only know in part, we only see in part, we see through a, a, a mirror dimly, right? Or a glass. Uh, and when we see him face to face, we'll know. So, First Corinthians thirteen, verse twelve. For now we see in a mirror. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. We will be like him. Um, so, let's go to First Corinthians 15. 15, 51. Ooh, that's a mirrored image, right? You look through a mirror dimly. Uh, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, which means die, right? But we shall be changed. What? Yes, from a mortal body to an immortal body that was prepared for us before the foundation of creation. Before there was a heaven and earth, created an incorruptible body for us. Yes, already pre-planned. But we haven't even been born yet. We already knew that. Okay. For in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, now think of it, 1,001, that's a second, right? That's a good way of timing a second. 1,001, even before you get to speak, we're done. We're gone. Change. Twinkling of an eye. Faster than you can blink. Okay? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. See? Raised from the dead, resurrection, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. What does that mean? Immortal. Mortal means you can die. Immortal. Immortality means life in perpetual without end. Let's keep reading. This is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. So when this corruption has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying as death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, Hades, where's your victory? Right? Sting of death is sin. So we'll be in an incorruptible body without sin. Now, what does it say? The strength of sin is the law. Break the law, you break the commandments, just like the two trees, right? You can eat of any tree, just not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, Adam and Eve could have eaten from the tree of life. They were still perfect and been immortal. 
Although if they were made perfect, I would think they'd be immortal. But there's a tree of life. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I'm going to read this next part. Therefore, my beloved brethren, we are brethren, right? Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, you're working for your salvation? No, that's not what it means. We're working for rewards. We're working for our Father, right? He's provided a way of salvation through His Son. That's already been done. So, um, we are set aside for good works. That doesn't mean salvation. Jesus Christ did it all. If you read Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, it's all about faith, right? And faith without works is dead. So you have to produce. You have to be doing. Faith produces fruit. That fruit is produced by work. Not salvation. Salvation issue is Jesus on the cross dying, shedding his blood. An innocent lamb, right? Paying the atonement, the price, the exchange. He gives us righteousness. He takes our sin. Okay? God looks at us and he sees the blood. Now, in Revelations, um, chapter 20, verse 11, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, whose face, who, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. That means no more earth, no more heaven. They've been destroyed. And we know they're going to be destroyed, destroyed by fire. And there was no place for them. If there's no place for them, they're gone, right? And then I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which was the Book of Life. And I've talked about this before. I think the, the books are a book of remembrance. Everything you did, everything you said, everything you felt are written down in books. You know? And there's a Book of Life. All the dead were judged according to their works. What? by the things which were written in the books. They're judged by their works? Hmm. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, the dead, and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each according to his works. It says it again. Right? Now, part of that works that I see is works are rewards, or lack of works of doing what God wanted you to do, you lose your rewards. Now, um, if we're walking out on faith, we walk by faith, not by sight. So we're stepping out on faith, trusting God's promises, His words, and what He says is true. Does that works? Well, it's fruit. So what happens? Death and Hades gives up the dead that were in them. Now Hades is hell. That's the fire beneath us. Um, and then here's the next part. This is Revelation 20, verse 14. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Anyone who is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So, your name's in the book, your name's not in the book. Was it blotted out? Was it never written in the book? Now, it's a book of life. So I think it could be twofold. Life in the physical mortal form. Life in the spiritual form. And what happens this? Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away and there is no sea. Now, it's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Now, the thing that I saw is 
death is going to be cast in the lake of fire. Okay, there's no more death. What is no more death? Undeath? Immortal. Mortal is death. Immortal, incorruptible, is life. Now he said that he's created a, a body for us, right? And that means at this point, God's going to get, he's judged everybody. The earth and the heavens are all gone. Everything you know, everything you used to, you know, you can see around you will be no more. And of course, I think it's uh, Peter who says, um, knowing that these things are going to be burned up in fire, what kind of life should you live? You know, live a life pleasing to God. What pleases God? Faith. Faith. Trusting in Him. Whole book of Hebrews. Abraham. Almost going to sacrifice Isaac with a knife. It was accounted to him righteous because he had faith. Noah. Building an ark. Never rained before. It says there's mist that comes up. Right? And waters the plants. The humidity. I think CO2 was greater back then. But that's a whole other thing. Um, he's building his ark and saying, get ready, get ready. Okay, year after year for like 100, 120 years, you know, um, telling everybody, it's coming, it's coming, the flood is coming. And people are going, flood from where? We don't even have rain. Right? Sad part is, only eight people were saved. Eight, a new beginning. Now, why didn't they listen? Because they thought he was crazy. Yet he listened to God. He was faithful. He built this massive ark. He got food for all the animals to have them survive for 40 days. And for his family. You know, God himself shut the door. And then people are knocking, let me in, let me in. Wow, ten virgins, right? Five were wise and had oil. Five were foolish. They weren't ready. They weren't watching when he was coming. And then they were left outside. You know, he, God is long-suffering. He wants no one to perish. But he says, Jesus said to Yeshua when he was walking the earth, repent, 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 go and sin no more. Mary Magdalene, right, caught in the act, right, and everybody wanted to stone her, stone her, because that's what the law says. And they said, well, whoever's without sin, go ahead. Well, the only one there that was out, without sin was him. And then everybody laughed, and he's, and he's like, where's your accusers? They're all gone. Well, I don't accuse you either. Just go and sin no more, you know? So, heaven and earth are going to pass away. And the best part Revelations 21, verse 3 and 4. And I heard with a loud voice from heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. He's going to be with us. We're going to see him face to face. Right? What's the next verse say? Verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there shall be no more death, sorrow, or crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then it says in verse 5, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. These words are faithful and true. Okay? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water freely to him who thirsts. Do you thirst to be with your creator? He says he's coming soon. Um, Revelations chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. Well, yeah, he is the bright and morning star. Says it in Revelations chapter 22, verse 16. Um, so we're going to see him face to face. Um in Exodus, 
chapter 34, verse 29. I told you we're going to jump around a little bit. I'll wait. Wait till you get there. Did you find it yet? Okay, good. All right. Exodus 34, verse 29. And now it was when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of testimony were with him in his hand, he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that his skin on his face shone while he was talking to him. Exodus 34, verse 30. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, his skin of his face shone. It was shining, shining. They were afraid to come near him. Okay? So he put a veil over his head so people wouldn't be afraid to speak to him. The glory of the Lord shining, right? The transformation where he took up Peter, James, and John, and they went up to the mountain. And he was transfigured. He shone. He was shining. Moses and Elijah showed up, and he was talking to him. Peter's like, uh, what do we do? Right? Now, in, jump around a little bit, but Numbers, chapter 12, verse 8. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and in not, not dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Right? Seeing him face to face. We will see him face to face. Just like it said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 12. Now we see in a mirror dimly. I, but then we see him face to face. There'll be no more death. Meaning, when we see him face to face, we will be changed. Changed into a form of immortality that we can be in his presence. Even the earth is going through birth pains, eagerly waiting for the revealings of the sons of God. The revealing of the angels? It's the revealing of Christ's body, the church. Okay? To put on incorruptible, meaning the new heaven and the new earth will be without corruption. What does that mean? It means it's going to be perfect as well. No more weight of sin. Um, and and evil, it weighs on the earth. Don't think, you know, animals are se sensitive to uh, vibrations. They can feel an earthquake if it happens soon. They can sense the spirits. I really do. Because I've seen my dog and um, I've seen cats where they're like looking at something over there and they're like, oh, I don't want to be near it. I don't want to be near it. Right? Um, in Ezekiel, he measures out the, the New Jerusalem, which is the uh, Mount Zion. Uh, in Ezekiel 48, verse 35, all the way around shall be 18,000 cubits. 18. Uh -huh. And the name of the city that is from that day shall be the Lord is there. Or Yahweh Shammah. I, don't, I can't do Hebrew. But yes. Okay. The Lord is there. Where? In his city. The New Jerusalem. Uh huh. And Um, I think it's Isaiah. I'm going to run down there really quick and I'll finish this up. About a new new heaven and new earth. See, Ezekiel um, got to measure the new city. So we know that there's going to be a new city. Not just in the book of Revelations, it's in the Old Testament. You know, 
and then yes Isaiah chapter 66 verse 21 I will also take some of them for priests and Levites says the Lord what my holy mountain Jerusalem that's in verse uh, Isaiah 66 verse 20 okay but in Isaiah 66, verse 22, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. That means they're permanent, right? He says he will make them. He's already proclaiming it, prophesying. He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. He already has seen all this. He knows the end from the beginning, okay? So shall your descendants and your name remain. It shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come worship before me, says the Lord. And here's the next part. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 24. Hmm. They shall go forth and look upon the corpses of men who have transgressed against, transgressed against me. For their worm does not die, their fire is not quenched, they shall be abhorrent to all flesh. Punished by fire and worms forever in the lake of fire. Yeah. So, Isaiah. Verse, chapter, chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with the chariots like a whirlwind. Okay, that's a tornado. Um, to render his anger with fury, his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be a many. He's a slaughtering king. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves go in the gardens after an idol in the mist, eat swine's flesh and abomination and the mouth, shall be consumed together. The ones that think they're sanctifying, they're righteous in their own eyes, they're doing evil, these Satanists. But anyways, thing is, he's coming to burn up the heavens and the earth and all those that do iniquity. But yet, to those that he has chosen to give faith, that we will believe in him and trust on him, that he is the Savior. He is the Anointed One. He is the Prince of Peace. He is an all-consuming fire to those that are wicked. But to us that look for his coming, he is <coughs> excuse me. He is our God. He is the one who will wipe away every tear. Because I think Judgment Day is going to be really sorrowful for a lot of people. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now there's the seed of Bemacy. You know, that the second death are not appointed to us. Those are the ones on the fifth seal that have gave up their life for the testimony of God and for the blood. Okay? Um, I really, really, really feel he's coming soon. Now, how soon? 9-11, 9-23, there's dates. Okay, now my timing on soon and his timing of soon, I don't think are the same. I'm expecting him any day now. And please, Lord, come. Find me worthy. Find my friends worthy. Find my family worthy. Uh, find my enemies worthy that they don't have to go through. Um, trials, tribulation, the great tribulation, or hell or the lake of fire um, but so Jesus Yeshua 
He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Today, I saw it in a cloud, and it was a cross. It was lit up like this, right? And then it shaped, the end of it shaped into like a key. So the end of the key and the thing that pointed out was the other end of the cross. So the, the, the this like this and this little pointy thing turned into like a key, right? And then all of a sudden it morphed into like a keyhole, a literal like old style keyhole, you know? And I'm like, wow. And then he showed me a square. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> like that. Like movies, right? Okay. It, it morphed into that. And I'm like, cross, key, door hole. Okay. And if you look at the picture that I'm going to put up for the image of this movie, um, I was, through many different sources, I was given a metal key, an old style metal key. I was, I found... Uh, maybe six to eight months later, a butterfly, um, a white butterfly with diamonds on it, you know, and then I was, um, I went outside and there was a white feather and then went to a thrift store, I found this really cool glass thing and what's on it? Waves, different colors, and then a blue moon. And I'm thinking, okay. And I put all these things in this little um, plate and put it in my bathroom, you know, so I'd see it every day, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, a key, a feather, a butterfly, a white butterfly, and then a blue moon. You can draw your own conclusions. I I've already have. So, anyways, I love you guys. This has been long enough. See you in the next video. Or maybe in the air. Love you.